your research until you're sure what you want to do. If you want to be a blogger, then SEO is not right for you. If you want to build a small business online and you don't have $100,000 or a million in venture cap to create a, what we call, like a Twitter, like a, the, next, the next big thing, most small business people are going to create theme-based content sites. You know, the cost is low. The energy is yours. It's your time. It's your energy. Um, it's up to you. You can control the process. And there's up to no reason why you can't build a successful business unless you make wrong decisions up front. If you decide to buy blogging software to build a theme-based content site, you're making a mistake. If you buy site build it and then decide to make a site based on travel and you only have two hours a week, you've made a fatal mistake. Uh, if you choose a niche that's too narrow, uh, some off-island, off of Anguilla, there's just not enough demand for that. No matter how much content you create, no matter how well it's written, um, there's just not enough people that are going to search for that particular tiny set of keywords. So I'd say those initial decisions that you make early on, how am I going to monetize? If you want to sell an e-good, but you're not somebody who likes to put up with customers, and I say put up with customers because when somebody in the forum says that, put up with customers, I'll tell them right off the bat, I know that you're not meant to sell products. Because if your attitude is putting up with a customer, don't go there. You're not going to be a happy puppy because customers complain. And if you're not focused on improving things so that customers are happy and your attitude is putting up with customers, you've now made an important decision that you're going to have to live with for years until you can hire people to take care of this part of the business or you give up. And the odds are you give up because you're doing something you don't enjoy. So, you know, the major leveragers, David, on the front end when you're starting are those first few key decisions that you've just got to get right. And on the back end, it's when you decide this is as much as I can possibly do, it's really deciding do I want to start bringing other people on board and then putting them in the right spot. Yeah. I think one of the key things I can see leverage points as well, which is what you managed to do so well, is to keep your finger on the pulse, to see what's coming down the pipe, what's what's on the horizon. And I think I got my first insight to that when, you know, sure, I got it back reading the Make Your Site Sell, but also when we had a chat a long time ago and you mentioned Web 2.0, this thing that was so so new. So I'm, I'm interested to know, where do you see things heading online? Are there any other shifts that you can see happening or further developments? that, you know, you might like to throw yourself out there, put yourself on a limb, and, um, yeah, give us some insight into what you see is coming. Yeah, the, the, right now we, we're in a period, or I call it like a, a period of digestion. You know, years and years ago, I wrote about how, you know, video, music, this is before Napster, I mean, anything that could be digitized uh, was going to get distributed through the web. How video, uh, and, I, and I believe that in the next 10 or 15 years, you know, we'll start to see the video websites, not video in websites, but video websites. And you'll click almost like, like navigate within a video to get to other parts of, of a video-based website. As the bandwidth just becomes, you know, faster and faster, uh, websites are going to change. Um, of course, for that to happen, Google has to figure out, or the next great search engine has to figure out um, voice recognition and understand what's in those websites. Um, but video was something we talked about years ago, and we're seeing that happen. RSS and blogging, you know, we talked about that. Uh, Web 2.0 uh, obviously is a major part of our push for you know, the foreseeable future, uh, continuing to improve content, too, so that people can get more and more out of it. But when I say digestion, uh, well, and the whole social interaction is, you know, sort of an, an offspring cousin, if you will, of, of Web 2.0. People are creating content. They're creating content as they interact socially. So that's a major shift. You know, if you asked me five years ago, I would tell you, how do people use the Web? They use the Web to search for information. How do they use the Web today? Yeah, they use the Web to search for information, and those are still the people who interest us in the business world. They also use it now to interact socially. Is there some crossover in business applications? Of course. Uh, just as there is in the real world. You know, there's the biz, there is, there is doing business, and then there is socializing. Uh, you don't socialize only to do business. 
which some people seem to mix up online. But you do socialize sometimes because it has a business purpose. And that's the way you should sort of think of the whole social interaction uh, explosion that's been happening on the web today. Um, but when I say digestion, what I mean by that is more of the same. You know, it, it, it's the development, the ongoing refinement, the pushing of these major trends that started a few years ago over the next two or three years. Um, right now, what else of importance is there on our horizon? And there's nothing major that's on the horizon. Are there neat little modules and things that we have coming out? Uh, yes. And those are those we don't talk about. But those are, that's not really what you're looking for. Um, what you're talking about is the really major things like video, you know. And study was still on bandwidth. You know, we were talking about how the web is really going to fundamentally change as everybody or the, or the majority of the world is on 24-7 high speed and there's no more. But, you know, now in a movie when you see that, dee, 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 you know, that, that the dial-up thing, yeah, yeah. kind of smile. You kind of smile like when you saw, well, I don't know how old you are, but, you know, in, in uh, the movie uh, Apollo, where the slide rule, somebody pulls out a slide rule, they're trying to figure out how to get the four astronauts home. You know, everybody in there was just like, look at the slide rule. Remember the slide rule? <laughs> uh, well, remember dial-up? Yeah. Well, you know. Baby uh, yeses. Guess, you know, <laughs> yeah, with fiber optics now, I mean, you know, the speed of the web is just I mean, it's getting earth-shaking, and that has implications in terms of, you know, we talked about how, the web is going to split, and you see it happening. You know, the network simply did not use the web. Not so much it did not get the web 10 years ago. It did not use the web. Now, look how cleverly NBC, CBS, ABC are starting to merge more and more of the programming you see on TV with the programming that they carry online on their site. Why? Because the bandwidth is there. And we talked about, this is I'm talking years ago now, before I see how two tiers was going to evolve. There would be these very big corporate sites that could use this cutting edge technology, the very high bandwidth sucking type of technology, and develop and deliver completely different type of websites than you and I would normally even consider to be a website per se. And then there's going to be the lower bandwidth, almost the, it's the interesting part of the internet, where all kinds of people are living and sharing ideas writing terrific websites that are turning into businesses, talking to their, talking to their grandmother by, by video Skype uh, across the country, where almost where the rest of us live and play. And again, with overlap, there's no, there's no strict black and white boundaries. But to make a long story short, I, got, I have no brilliant uh, new things that are at least on, on our horizon. I'm sure that there's still the unforeseeable great thing that's in some venture capitalist uh, hands right now. But it's going to be a twist you know, social media on Web 2.0, whatever. It's like, the, where is the next great, where is the next great thing coming from? It usually comes from and because of changes in technology. You know, I mean, Ajax. A lot of the changes in technology are what enable today's sites to exist. They're more or less they're the, they're the expression of technological advancement, and not because you know we couldn't do this stuff 10 years ago. It wasn't possible because of bandwidth. It wasn't possible because Ajax didn't exist. It wasn't possible because, you know what I mean? All these things have to fall into place before the next great trend that consumers see, that users of the web see. And those aren't really on the horizon uh, as far as I can see. Maybe a smarter guy like O'Reilly could give you a better answer to that. But um, as far as we can see as it relates to SBIers and the typical small business online, it's going to be... Uh, more of the same, interesting, pushing it in new directions, and we've got to be there to catch those new directions, but no major new technologies yeah. that we can see coming down that make a major difference.